Hello everybody. In this video, we will introduce the use of entity framework. It's going to be a video for two different chapters in the book. Uh, we're going to learn uh, the benefit of using entity framework with ADO.NET. And most of those is because you can actually use uh, class mapping in order to make it work and have it the way that you need it. So let's actually get started. What I want to do, I want to do a, a simple block, applica uh, block application where we can actually be able to save blocks and post. We, have, we can have multiple blocks, we can have multiple posts per block, and we will have one to many relationships in that. There is an example in Microsoft Documents talking about that, so I want to dissect it little by little and play around and see the benefit of the strong type inside a database. One of the biggest benefits of Entity Framework is it can actually provision your database. That means that depending how you put your data or your classes, your tables and database will be created or by reverse. If you already have a database, Entity Framework can go to the database, can see the structure and then create what it will be the, um, the classes structure. And I want to show you both scenarios. So let's get started. As you can see, I'm already in IMT with a new console application. What I will go is get away from my program CSS and I will create a new one called model.cs. And in this one, what are we going to be using? We are not being created a, a model class. We will create a block class. And this block class will have only properties. We have a public integer block ID with a get set. Have a public string URL that will be a simple get and set right so it's a simple block class in the same file just to keep it simple we're going to create another class here and let's call this one post so the idea is that any block ca can have any quantity of post so let's make that reference here we do the reference with a simple um, probably we need to do a, a list. Oh, let's do the reference right here. Public list. Of course, for your list, you need to have the collection generic type post. Let's call it post in plural. We are simple get. And by default, it's going to be a A new post, right? So by default, any any block that is going to be created, we create a new list of posts, and we can then do something about it, right? So that's pretty much what we're doing there. In the post, let's have simple information: public integer post ID. We'll have public title, and this will be a string with a get and set, and public content, a string. This will allow us to have the basic post structure. Now, Think this about like having your database. So imagine that every class will be actually a field. So here we are defining that the block will have a list of posts. This list of posts will not be a property of the block, but it will be a property of the post reference the block itself. So here we can actually just do something as public 
integer log id we will get another that will reference a block and that will very much make the one to many connection and because of that we can actually list the block that it belongs with a simple public block block we keep in the same name for consistency here and we do the getter and the setter and that will be the basic class classes that we need to implement so as i said before we have the block class an id and url that block will have a list of posts that by default is going to be generated and the post will have a post id title content and reference to the blog itself right? that's pretty much how it's going to be working now we need to make the provision or we need to create a database you can use um, the sql database that you already have even you can use the database that you have on the cloud you want to create a new one you can do that and to proceed we are actually going to use a new nugget package so let me show the nugget website and the one that we want to be looking here and it will be depending the type of database that you want to use we're going to look for entity framework we have a bunch of those right there so we have um the one that we're going to be using the is going to be pretty much the core element of the entity framework core will allow us to execute in another place entity framework full is for um, let's say for other windows system through visual studio but let's use the minimized version of framework core and we can use abstraction analyzer designs those are going to be the different elements tools is something that we need to install in order to execute the migration and i will explain that in a little and we have database in memory we have sql server we have several of those and we have one for sql light now the sql light what it is is a database that's actually a file and that file is a binary file and that file have a structure of table inside so let's actually use we are going to use this one if you want to use the one for sql server you need to be installing of course the one for the sql server as it is reflected right here but in this case let's keep the thing, things a little bit simple so let's install this one for sqlite i will be copying this let me put my terminal again and I will be added it in order to have it there. Okay. And I need to get back actually because I use referring that it is something that I was not supposed to. I installed version six and we need to go to version five. Version six at the moment is still in preview. And the .NET uh, framework that we're using right now is .NET 5, so we need to get back to the version 5. For that, we need to pretty much go to the version history, get the latest version 5. And after we have the latest version 5, we just install that one. And the cool thing is we can actually do it on top. Let me show you that. So let me go to the CS project. You will see that we have the SQLite version 6 there. Um, let me execute the version 5 actually I probably didn't copy correctly let me check okay there you go version 5 that's going to be installed and you will see that it's still having 6 preview it will move to version 5 automatically. Perfect. So now that we have version 5 in there, we can actually proceed. One thing that our classes need to have in order to have the ID generated for a per table, it needs to have, um, we can have a decorator for ID, 
or having an integer that has the same name as the class with the word ID at the end. That, that way, Entity Framework will be smart enough, let's say like that, in order to understand what I need to be doing. So here, we need to do is, let's go here at the top, let's import our um, Entity Framework. And it's actually no system in Microsoft. Entity Franco Core. I'm going to install. Let's keep it in general one. Let's keep all of those. Um, just before the classes, I will create another class called, uh, it's going to be the context. The context, it will be the element that will define the connection and the structure of what it to be doing. So here, there are two different type of property that we need to define. Well, and one type, and that will be one per table, let's say like that. So we need to have a DB set. And for this DB set, we need to send the element or the type Let's do the post, for example, and let's call this post in a simple getter and setter. Mm. Oh, yeah, I cannot do this right away here. Sorry. I I was telling you that I actually need to create first my class of the context. We need to have the context public class. And let's call this the same way that Microsoft does login context. And we want to be extended in a minute. This class will came for my database context class. Database context is an instant represent. And let me just read here a session with the database and can be used to query and save instance of your entities. And typically you can create classes that arrive from this context that contain a DB set with the entity or the class itself. If the properties have a public setter, they are automatically utilized when the instance of the thereby context is created. That means that it's a column in your table. We can override it and we can do other stuff with that. But mostly, it's what allows us to have a database and can use it to query and save instance of my inst of my classes per se in there. Now that so we have that, let's actually say my, oops, my div set. So this div set pretty much is just pretty much the same to query instance of post and we allow us to use link you in order to get the system. What will the system will do in the background? And the book actually shows you that if you want to see it, is that the link you query will be transformed in SQL queries in this case, depending what is the case. So we need to have that one and we need to have the one for the blocks. And let's call it blocks in plural. And now what we need to do is we actually need to do the connection string for my context. And that we need to do it, we need to override from the DB context the on configuration. And I will show you that. So we need pretty much to go to pro it's a protected override that is not going to be accessed to anyone, just this class itself. It's a method that is not using on anything and it's called on configuring this on configuring what it actually can have is a DB context option builder let's call this options opt and let's say that 
to those option builder whenever it's configured will pretty much use SQLite. We install the dependency for SQLite and we're able to use it. If you are using SQL Server, it will be use SQL Server. So we need to save this. Let me just terminate it right here. And for me, use SQLite, the only thing that I need to do is I need to send my option action that actually have my database connection. So where you can actually do the way that SQL Server, the connection stream for a SQLite is, is just have a data source, colon, and the location of the file that you want to save. In this case, I want to save it in the same folder. So I will not put a, con a location, but if you are in a Windows computer, of course you need to do something like this and put the rest. If you are on, of course, in order to have this one, you need to have the at at the beginning. Just remember that. If you are in a in a Linux or a Mac, you you need to put the path something like this, right? In this case, I will use the same context that I have by default. So I will use the folder where I am, and I will call this my block the SQLite database. If you are using a SQL Server, here you need to put your connection string. Of course, you need to go through the process to do the options and have the connection string getting from your secret, thing like that in a better scenario. But for now, let's, let's do something like this, right? Block to SQLite. And probably, let me put this in a new window, even a new line. Perfect, just to be able to read it. So with these simple elements, we have enough in order to create a database. So for that, we, we need to actually install another dependencies from for a Nougat package. That dependency will be a, a global tools. One of the cool things about .NET is you can actually do, you can install that, uh, you can do install tools that are going to be generally available that will expand the .NET functionality itself. One of those um, tool is the .NET EF, the, the entity framework section, right? And in order to do it, you just need to create, you need to execute .NET tool install dash dash global .NET dash EF. That will add more functionality to our .NET core application or command line. And that we will process and we'll install a bunch of stuff. And so you can invoke it using the command .NET EF. Perfect. So it was successfully installed. So I need to add another package to my routine in order to make um, able to connect and create the database the way that I have in my models. And that package will be um, probably have here. Well, we'll use the design. And let me just check the nugget, just to verify the version. Let's look for that. Don't core dot design. There you go. And of course, we need to go to version five, file seven. And that should be here is the sign. It should be added to our package reference. Cool, it's already there. And it have different runtime, as you can see, and we'll show you what those actually does. And for now, in order to proceed, we're going to create our database and we will be create uh, and migrate it from our model. So one of the things is you need to keep track of every change that you do to the database. And when you provision the database the first time or at the beginning, it's better to have a migration element to do it. A migration element 
is pretty much a script or code that you can actually execute and connect to the database and will be provisioned or will read from that. And that's better that it's actually outside your main program execution. That's why we are not programming like create table and do connection. We are not doing that internally. And of course we would we, we want to skip all that, right? We can actually use our classes knowledge with a little tweaking for the connections. With this context, we'll pretty much push the changes to the database. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to do .NET EF is the command that we just installed. And let's add a new migration. And we'll call initial. Let's execute. It will start build. And it just create the migration. As you can see now, we have a migration folder. And this migration have a bunch of stuff that pretty much what it's doing is will have everything that needs to be created. Like for example, migration create table called blocks. It's a new table, have a block ID, that have a URL, column, string, integer, and all this code that we needed in order to create a table is going to be done for us. And we have the same for the build the target, what it's going to be doing, etc. 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 It's actually it's actually really good what it's actually doing for us. And we can see in the context is the one to execute that. But don't worry, you don't need to see that. You don't need to worry about this. So let's minimize this. And now that we have the migration created, we can do a simple .NET EF database update. And that will start build. If it failed the first time, because like this, it said the initialization string doesn't contain starting index zero. Let's try it to run it again. If it's still failing, as it's failing with me, let's try just to execute the code.NET run. They will just execute the program. We should see the hello world because we're not doing anything. The model is not being attached to the main execution. Let's do a simple.NET build. Just in case we have building without issues. Cool. And let's try to do again the .NET EF database update and let's see how it goes. Okay, I have an issue. Probably have a typo somewhere. Let me verify that. Okay, I had a typo in my connection string. This one was a uh, two, two dot semicolon, but it actually needs to be an equal sign. That was the issue. So now that we have the equal sign, I already execute my database update. Is just executed without issues. That allow me to have the new file here called block SQLite. In order to see that, what I would recommend, and, and probably you can install like a something for Visual Studio. Well, for this one, I don't know, I, like, I want to have it like externally. There's a tool like this one called DB Browser for SQLite. And it's really lightweight. It is available for Windows and for Mac OS. Download it, install it. Um, I recommend to install the 64-bit version, right? You have a Windows or get um, the portable one, or even use the one for macOS. doesn't matter. Well, just have that one there. And when you open it, you will see something like this, right? Here we need to create, open a new database, and that database should be able to do what we need it. Now, in my particular case, because I have a Linux environment here, on top of my windows, 
this is just for me what i will be doing is i will copy my block sqlite and i will paste it in my mount directory in my pretty much my windows user my username here and probably should not be showing that but well whatever downloads let's actually put in documents there you go and i co just copy that one right there so in my windows it's simpler for me just to open it and i will go to my documents that i have somewhere and i will open my blog sqlite as you can see here i have my blocks table with block id as primary key the url as text i have my post with my post id as primary key title content and the blog id blog id as you can see is reference with this index right that we have right here and is connected to the blocks itself we have the migration history that pretty much tells every, every time that we have any migration and we have a local sequence that is actually needed by sqlite in order to execute or generate the next uh, id let's let's say like that right that does, does something specific for sqlite but we have everything here of course we have brought the data everything is empty except with the migration history to actually tell us which file was created and executed with which product version right and the sequence also empty so now that we have that we can actually now use our connections we can actually use our database right away without any other um, issue just referring directly to the model so let's go to the program and here the only things that i will be doing is using system link you and let's get rid of this and let's call that using and let's call a bar database equal new we call this how we call this actually the blogging context using the same namespace yeah there you go the main constructor there so that means that i don't need to close the connection like we're just having that connection i can use everything so now something really simple let's do console right line um, adding a new block with no post and you can do a simple database dot add we can specify what we need to add here so we can use new block directly and the only elements that we need to specify in the block will be the url remember the id will be generated by us and let's call url equal https dash dash example dot com And that's it. And after that, we just need to save the changes. Database does save changes. And we execute our code. So let me just clear this. .NET run. Adding a new blog with no posts. And done. Just with that, if we go back to our browser, we can actually do refresh somewhere we have the refresh there here hmm. oh 
I need to do the copy over. So let me close the database. This is just for me. You should be able to do the change. So let me just copy that again where it's supposed to be. And I will reopen the same file. And there you go. I have my example.com with a block ID. Perfect. So I have that one there. I can read it. I can see like list the posts. So we can do um let's do let's have a list here. And of course, in order to have the list ready, we need to use the system generic collections. Generics. Collections, approval. Generic and singular. There you go. So I can use blocks equal database dot blocks so just with that um we have an issue here what is happening can I split the connect time and let's use to list of blog and that should be enough oh they didn't like it oh I need to it's, it's a method there you go okay and now we can do a for each or we can do a simple blocks dot for each for every block I will do a simple and let me do a string interpolation here. I can use B and what am I doing here? This actually should be like this. For this log, let's call it a B. Can do a B dot log ID. And a simple B dot URL. And let's close this one. There you go. So now with that, we just query the blog itself and we should be able to print those. Let me disable this because I don't need to add them anymore. I, it's already there. Oops. Okay, <laughs> let me use execute it. And you can see it just get executed. If I insert a new block, and let me just... Um, Let's call this, I don't know, Google. And let's do a, another one for, I don't know, South Texas College. So I will insert two more, but we already have one. And execute. And then I can read every blocks that I have in my blocks and simple but that and this actually came in from the database directly let me just do an extra copy so I can actually open my DB browser and again this is just for me let me close the database I will open it again in your case you should be able just to refresh it and you can see the three blocks are getting there read it this allow me to to query that now what other queries we can use uh, let's 
do a console right now here and let's do um, get all blocks for example and let me just comment this out i don't need it anymore and let's do and this one let's put an extra line let's put an extra line like that it's not the best appropriately let's keep it like that and now let's use a console line and get block with id equal to for example how can we use that well we can use a simple block b equal database blocks and here we can actually now use um link you and we can use uh, something like select of the type block and what i need to be selecting here mm. let's send the block element and we need to have where the block dot Mm, what we can do here probably we can skip the select let's do a where and let's call let's call this block 2 and let's call this beam just to have it better b dot block id is equal as two have an issue here where it's having cannot explicitly convert and let's do a simple bar probably this is the lazy one okay and now we can just do a console right line and let's do block to dot hmm I have all the extra elements here let me do let me just select what I can select here Let's get the first element. Yeah, probably. And now we can use something like block dot. There you go. Just get the URL. And let's execute it. Dot net run. Let me actually clear it to show it. Dot net run. And get all the blocks. And now we're getting the block with ID equal to, and we know that the one we equal to is actually the google.com. So with those, we are able to actually query the database in a really simple way. You send just link you. I know that link you sometimes could be a little troublesome, and you need a learning curve to get it, but after you get those, you see that it's actually really mm, better to, to, to get it, right? So let me just verify it's getting the first element because this is going to be like a enumerable. So just getting the first element, I can actually just cast it right away as a block. Yes, I can. So by default, this will be, could be like a list or something like that, and I just convert it, right? But now, because I know that I just getting the first one, I just do the first just to extract that element and I can cast it as a block. And if I execute this again, I have the same behavior. Cool.
So let's now uh, update our information. Let's actually update the google.com and let's add a own post in there. Okay. So now we know that we can actually query. Let's actually do the update and let's update this one specifically. So we have the block, the one we already have as a block two, block with ID two. So what we can do here is let's do Let me do a console right line right here just to save some space and we can actually put mm, updating Google to something else. And we can do something really simple. So we can do log to dot URL. Let's say that we don't want to have this to be different. Let's do TPS dash, dash I don't know. Let's actually change this to roll from and dot LYC or whatever. Right? Um I can do to block to dot post. I can add a new post. And that will allow me just to do a new post and title, let's say my new post. And let's do my content. With very interesting information. Oh, something like that. If I save this, let's see if it actually works. Well, that title doesn't exist in current context. Model post. We have title and we have content. Yeah, it does. Let me see what I'm doing wrong here. Give me a second. Okay, but it's actually really simple. I'm doing semicolon instead of equals. I don't know why. There you go. So now that we allow it to have a new post that will be added. And what else I can do here? I can add something like that and act or actually I can have an insta with a post. Let's do a post, new post, or let's call this second post equal new and let's do title second post. And let's do content, another relevant content. And we should be able just to do blog to post dot add my second post. So you can do it just instead of a new instance or if you already have the insert of that particular element, you can actually save it. So it's two different ways to change something there. After we have that, we just do a database dot save change. And we can actually see, and we can actually skip. Let's do clear. Let me just copy this over right here so we can actually see the new url and let's do it dot net run and we get all of them we just get the blog with id number two and updated google to something else we change it to rodolfo at yc right but also we added a couple of posts we can actually go to 
here. Well, sorry, let me do again my copy. We can actually do here. Let me just close this, open it again. And you can see my second URL changed. But now, if I will go to post, I have two posts with the blog ID number two. That means that it belongs to the second cell. So that's pretty neat. Something that we can do here. Now that so we added this, and let me just let me comment all this because we don't need I don't need it right now. Let's play around with this one. So we're here, we're sending to do this, but instead of doing this. Let's actually do something else. Let's do for let's print it. That's okay. And let's do b dot for each. Actually in b dot post dot for each, there you go. And now we can do something extra. Let's do where we post that we have here. We just do right line with a tab. And let's send this string interpolation. And let's just put the, the post title in there. There you go. So here we'll go through every blog and then we'll go to every post and we should be able just to see the post added in the second one because the first and the third doesn't have anyone. So let's do a clear. Let's do a .NET run and we just should be able to see that. Hmm. Okay, we're about to print this. But then we are not able to get the post. Why we're not able to get the post? Let me do a simple down that build. Okay, we don't have issues. Done that run. Hmm, so how is not making this one? What I can do here, mm, let me see what is happening. If I do a simple system write, and let's do B post. Okay, we have a collection. Okay. It will be the tab, the one that actually has any issues. Let me execute it again. Somehow it's not doing this one. And I'm not sure why it's not doing it. So 
But let me pause the video and I'm sorry for this, guys. Okay, I found out my error. Sorry for that. So the first thing that we need to do in order to pull up the nested data, we need to explicit, specify that we want nested data. That's why it doesn't come by default. So one other thing we need to import or use in the entity framework. And when we have the blocks as a list, before to create as a list, we just need to do the include. And we say for every block, I want you to bring me the block that post. And let's actually call this b, b dot post. There you go. That's the way we actually tell it that I include the post. So we can actually go for every post that we have in the blog. We can actually write like that. So let's see how it looks like now. And there you go. The first blog doesn't have anything. The second one have the new post, a single post. And the third one have that one. So that's actually pretty neat. So something that we can do here is let's do order by and let's create this order of the post to be something that we actually need and leave for every post I want to order by post.id by post ID if I save this, it doesn't allow me to do the for each anymore. Well, we can actually send this one. So probably let me try to put the for each the order at the end. No, it doesn't allow me to do. We can do what we can do here. There's one bar post equal b dot post order by and then for every post, we can actually now do this. We need to separate the concept. Mm. So this one, what it actually is. Order number all post. Post. Let me change this to a list. That's why I love list here. Of type post. And that will allow me, maybe, mm. oh, wait, like this. Okay. Could be. So let's try it again. Oh, let me see how I can actually do the order by in a better way. Let me check my notes right now. Or we can actually do it together. I look further by the link you. And I want to see an ascendant mode. What we can do here. Order by. Yeah, that should be pretty much. So what is expecting here? Let me do all in one line again. Probably 
public and do something like this. Post, order by, convert it to a list, and from, oh, here you go. And for every element of the list, I print it. Let's see if this actually works. Why the post ID? This one is actually two and this should be one. Let's actually print it. Let's see what it's actually showing. Let's do p dot post ID. Oh, <laughs> somehow my new post get pushed to second, and the second post get pushed to ID number one. So it actually was doing it. So we can actually do something like this. <laughs> Sorry. Or we can actually do order by descending, probably. Order by descending. And uh, we should see the the order changes of the post right there. There you go. So you can actually apply link queue on top of that. And I know that we I probably showed it through the video. I right? probably shouldn't be doing that, but I wanted to show when you have an issue, what else you can do? You can Google information, you can read the book. You can actually try to change, you can try to separate a little bit in order to find where is that actual problem. So this allowed me now just to have everything together. So we able to query every block and the post that belongs to one particular block. And if you want to remove something, um could be like next step. Let's actually do it again. Um Let's try, let's try now, let's go here. Let's call this, um, we can actually get this. Let's call this block three. Let's get the first element for the block tree. And we can actually remove an element so in just as simple as the database that remove my block tree. It will save the database after that. Save changes. We should be able Let me get all this information and I will create a new method. Public void, uh, let's call this print all. And let's put that one right here. And uh, we can actually copy this. What a fish you have here now. Oh, I need to be public static, probably. Okay, let's have that one right here. Uh, at the end, let's do a simple database dot. Can I close it? How can I change the context? Well, let's do the using again. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Sorry for this. 
this one actually need to be outside the using so I need to be outside the main that is the blue one it's after here we just put that one right there boom let's copy this because just because and um, let's create this one and let's send this to the bottom right now we have print all if it was simple print all we should be able to see it and i want to print all again right here so we should be print both the first time should have the number three in there the second one you should not have it so let's see how it goes done that run there you go number three is there and in the second one number three is not there anymore you just get deleted with simple remove you can actually remove element and we just do a full crud application we create it we read we update it and we deleted element from here and it's actually pretty pretty neat pretty straightforward and well we have the caveats during the video and some errors here things outside the script but we'll pretty much be able to do and execute everything that we needed or everything that we not wanted so that's pretty much the way that we can actually proceed um, doing everything i need so before i close this let me just create another example let me get back one level so i'm using my entity framework let me do the net new let's call ef sample 2 right let's open this oops i open them both <laughs> let's open the example two there you go so example two is a simple hello world as you can see let's build it let's save it Perfect, let's open my terminal. And what I want to do here, I want to copy from example one. In this case, I want to copy my database. How can I call the database? Call, call it log SQLite. I will copy right here. So I have the same database. So what I will do now is I will create the set this project doesn't have the model so i want to create the models on top of that and we'll see how easy it's actually able to do that and in order to do it we need to install a couple of things we need to add the net add we need to add the design and we need to add the sqlite too So now that we have that, and now that we have the tools to actually get everything right away, the, the way that we need it, we just need to load, or we need to do something really fast. So we're going to do a .NET, EF, and we're going to create a DB context, scaffold, and we pro and we put the direction of, of a connection string or the file. In this case, will be data source equal log dot SQLite. That is in this particular folder. And then we need to specify the driver. And this case will be Microsoft dot entity dt framework core the SQLite and with that we should be able to read the existing database and that database just created my blocks as you can see it has a little more element like have the constructor specified there 
right? Um, the poll system being at least actually do it as a collection, but this is understandable. And we have the post there too. Also, we can see the the context and the context have the connection string. It's actually recommend you to remove the connection string and put a secret or something else. But it created the connection string, it created the and the two classes reading from the database. Remember, this database was copied for the previous project, and that's pretty much it. Did it, and now we can just initialize it and start working with it, and we can start reading information without any issue, because we just how can I say created models based on a database. So in the first program, we created tables, and the second one, we created the model. We as approach do you want to use? It's up to you. Whatever is easy for you. What I like to do use, I actually like to create my migrations and I do code first and then do my migrations for changes. For example, I don't need to have the second one open anymore. So let me just close it. And here, let's say that I will go back to my models. And let's say that my post, I want to add something extra there. I want to create public string, let's call this author, with a get set, right? And now we need to have the author right there, and we we'll use print the name in directly. How we accommodate that? Well, first of all, we need to do a not net ef um, migration add, and we get a new migration that's called added author, for example. Oh, I need to open the project. There you go. So added author. So that will create a new migration process for me. And now, so we have that author there. Actually, do that net if database update that will go and extends my post table to add the outer column now. So if I can actually go back here, let me close it. Oh, let me just copy over. Oops, copy this one. There you go. So let me open this one. I will open my database again. And if I go to post, now I have an author that by default is empty. It's, it's new, right? We can actually pull this here and let's do something, I don't know, Rodolfo, for example. Apply it, you can actually do it through here or not. It's up to you. And let's have this one to be, I don't know, John. There you go. And we should be able to go here and uh, in the print all we we'll print a title and let's put it here by let's do post dot author right? let's do net run we have an issue because post ID three doesn't exist anymore. And that's why you try to delete something that doesn't exist. That's, that's pretty much the issue. But other than that, you can actually see, um, oh, it didn't bring the outer. Why it didn't bring the outer? Oh, it didn't bring the outer because I added to the grown database itself. Let me just copy from my document. Um, this one is actually log SQLite. Let me copy that one over here. Let me comment my deletion because I don't have it anymore. Let me comment this print all because I just need to print it once. Let me clear the console so you'll be able to see it. Dot net run. And 
it didn't work. <laughs> Why it didn't work? Always failing for me. They didn't not commit anything. Oh, save the table score, display it. If I refresh this, that formation should be there. So why didn't bring my outdoor now? We suppose and I put the post there. So I was supposed to actually read my post dot outdoor. There is a string. And it's on the database somehow. It's not reading it. Okay, I think I know what it is. I need to write changes. So it was not committed, let's say like that, right? I just write the changes. Let me clear this. Let me copy again from there to here. And I execute. And it didn't work either. Well, why is it didn't work either? Okay, it looks like I have a, like a cache issue. I just clear my cache a little bit, I just waited, and now I'm able to see who is actually creating, who are the authors. So without any change to the code, just verify that I have the, the latest changes to the SQL file. That actually worked, and it's showing me that. So with that, we should be able just to extend it. And I know that we've been over an hour now, but let me just show you something really quick. Um, something that could cause problems and loss of data. So let's do something really similar. Um, let's duplicate our blocks to be author. Let's have the author ID. Let's have the name, right? And this one, instead of having this little one as an ID, author ID, and we'll have the public author author get set. And this is an integer. Right? What I'm doing is just create a new table. I'm doing the connection. So an author can have multiple posts and a blog can have multiple posts. So we have a, a weird connection with the post table, right? Well, not weird, but sometimes needed. So we can actually do something like this and we just need to create a context. And let's put a context here. And here will be out of the plural, right? And we can do a new migration, and more likely this migration will, will fail. On the .NET EF migration is added outdoor table. We say it, it will prevent loose data. Why? Because we remove um, a column, a property here. We don't have the author string name anymore. We just have author ID. But that's why it gives that prevention. If we do .NET EF database update, It could fail sometimes because franking constraint. And with the franking is that our database already have data. And we have a one to many relationship from the author to the post. So by default, there is no or author ID is not being defined by default. So I, I didn't try this, but let me do by default is going to be one. 
And let's try it to do it again. Let's see if that actually works. It will not. Because the number one doesn't exist. So we still have that foreign key constraint fail. Right? So in that particular case, because we are using the best course of action, and because you're in a development environment, where you export your data and you import it and you be careful in the database size, or you can do as simple as remove. And after you remove it, it's not there anymore, you do the migration again, the update. Of course, they will do the table structure, but your data will be lost. So be careful about this. And it's something that needs to be accommodated, right? So now that we have that, let me do a, a copy to my document folders. I will open my database process on how I close it. Let me open my database. Tracing documents. Where is my documents? Oops. Right here. And you see that the author's table is right there. You have several indexes and oops. And the structures and the data is not there anymore. As you can see. So that is how it works. That is what it is right now. So just be careful with that. And you can extend your database. Be careful how you extend it. But you have a major change like the one that just did with reference to a table with the table already had in data and having a foreign key issue there, it will the migration will not work, right? It's something to, to be need to be accommodated. So I will end the video right now. Um the benefits of the entity framework is actually in how it scaffolds everything or just from the code to the database or from the database to the code. And it's actually pretty neat. It's pretty elegant. There's people that don't like it. There's people that say that it's a performance issue, specifically when there's a big um, data set. But for what we're doing is more than enough and actually help us having that strong typing to help us a lot in our code. So I will upload both documents uh, to, the, to GitHub if you want to have this. And um, I will have a couple of um, referring um, documentation that you can actually use for Microsoft. Um, and that's it, pretty much. So I really hope that you like it. Any question or any doubt, as always, don't hesitate to reach me. Happy coding, everybody.